going to talk to you a little bit about public image. Why does it matter? I think everybody would know why it matters. It's important that we tell our story. People understand what Rotary does. We have heard already a lot today about some of the great projects that people do. Um, we've just got to get out and tell people what that is. Okay, so that's what Rotary is all about. It's been mentioned a lot about people of action. I'll talk about it again, Michael mentioned it. But um, public image or, or what people think of Rotary is what we tell them about Rotary. It's about what we do and not only about what we do, but how we tell them about what we do. So, um, and Rotary, to get to the point about advertising, what Rotary does is provide some guidelines. I'm going to ask a question, show of hands, first of all. Who's been onto the Rotary Brand Centre before? Oh, more than normal. Okay, good. Okay, so what you would know from there is it actually provides you with a lot of materials, a lot of guidance and some tools. Maybe some of them could be better, but that's beside the point. They are, there are a lot of them there. And what they are there to do is they're designed to help you tell your story. They're not there to tell a story for you. And that's one of the, to the question about the advertising. Um, what Rotary is about is providing those globally consistent guidelines and guidance. But in terms of telling a story about advertising, it's something that we all need to do. We need to make it locally relevant. We need to make people understand what we're doing in our communities because that's what Rotary is about. So there, we can have generic ads about Rotary and there are certainly um, uh, platforms where they've got video presentations, YouTube, Vimeo. You can go in, you can Google Rotary and you can get videos about Rotary, but you need to make it locally relevant. So that's where some of these, these tools come in. So that's why Rotary doesn't do just generic adver advertising because it's not then locally relevant. Um, so some of the... Some of the um, the things behind the, the brand centre and those guidelines is designed to help us speak and write consistently in, in, in language that helps people understand what Rotary is about. And the big thing that Rotary has been pushing the last few years is people of action, because that's what we are. So that is Rotary's public image strategy is essentially to show Rotarians as people of action. So everything that we do when we're going out and presenting our clubs, when we put out brochures, when we do our websites or our Facebook pages, the idea is that we keep all of that in mind. Um, a few other things as well, which we'll, we'll get to, but it's about showing Rotary in that light of people of action. And that's the thing that will help people understand what Rotary does, because it's been mentioned a few times before and the questions are asked, what does Rotary do that other organisations around us don't? So we need to be unique and we need, not unique, but we need to be you know, pushing our story and telling people what we do. So that's why it's important. Um, <clears throat> so the Rotary brand itself is about a few things. It's about a logo, which I'm going to talk about later, but it's actually more than that. It's about, and again, we've talked about this a few times already today, which is how we go about doing things, how we run our meetings, how we, um, you know, present ourselves with our clothing and our branding. Um, when we go out to events, what kind of materials do we have out there that show people who we are? Um, you know, but it is about the things that we do, the things that we say. Um, so people have mentioned about, you know, going into a meeting and, and basically being ignored. Um, or you get a good experience, you go into a meeting and people are talking to you. All of those things go toward it, go towards our brand. So yes, there's the rotary branding, um, but what we do, just like the pyramid that David showed, we create the brand of Rotary. We are the brand of Rotary. We represent it. We're ambassadors of it. So everything that we do goes towards doing that. So um, the thing that uh, I am passionate about is just making sure that we have compelling brand and consistent brand communication so that when we go out to the public and we present ourselves in a consistent way, um, then it can help immediately identify ourselves as Rotary. Um, and I like to say that um, it also then means that anything that we do as Rotarians helps build the brand of other Rotary clubs and anything that they do helps build our reputation and our brand as well because if we are using the same consistent messaging and we're using the same consistent um, uh, imagery and uh, branding, so the logos. 
Um, so again, just mention people of action. So uh, most of these things I've already mentioned, but um, it is, as I said, it's, it's been Rotary's public image campaign now for a number of years, and that is the thing that they want to see us push. We're not here to tell you what to do. We're just here to give you guidance on things that you can do. Um, and that is one of the things that we would definitely push, which is to do, make sure that everything you do, think about it. Is this showing us as people of action or is this showing people that we can be people of action? So um, just keep that in the mind whenever you're doing promotions of your events or anything like that. That's, that, that's the, the, the underlying message. <clears throat> So, um, I mentioned the Brand Centre, and I'm going to flick over to it in a second, um, but it is, if I can say, one, one big takeaway, I don't have the takeaway symbol that somebody else had, but it was you, Michael, wasn't it, little takeaway symbol? Big takeaway symbol, please go and look at the Brand Centre. It will just give you ideas, um, and I see a lot, and again, we'll come to this in a, in a little bit, I see a lot of people trying to reinvent the wheel, like literally reinvent the wheel. Um, don't reinvent the wheel. Um, the wheel is there, you can use it, all of the logos, materials, great ideas on there, customise them, make them locally relevant. So please, please, please go into the Brand Centre if you do nothing else after today. Um, I will also be sending out to your assistant governors a link which has a set of files that you can download that will have your club logos done in the right way, it'll have Rotary logos done in the right way, it'll have Interact logos done in the right way, Rotary logos, the district logo, etc., that you can then use. Um, it'll also have a, um, and I'll show you what the, the files look like in a minute, but it'll have a checklist for looking at all the places that you're currently using your logo, about things that you might want to review it and update it. Um, there will be a guide to um, social media posts, and I'll talk about that as well in a little bit. It'll have a guide to how to use that logo as well. So um, what I'd like to say is hopefully there's no excuse <laughs> for not knowing what the branding is supposed to be about, um, but I just please encourage you to go and go and have a look at that. So this is the, the Rotary Brand Centre. Um, I believe they're looking at updating it, but basically what you've got in here is some stuff here. You've got uh, materials around people of action, things that you can use. The guidelines, very important. Again, I will have downloaded that for you. The ability to do logos. Okay, so um, if you again, there's there's other things on here as well. Um, but the the one thing that you can do is you can definitely go in and have a look at those areas. There's also uh, examples for print advertisements. Um, uh, and, and, and other materials, you can design brochures as well. You just have to put, put in all your little details about your club and you can create your own brochure. So again, you don't have to recreate all of these things. You can actually go in there and actually do a lot just with the materials and the, um, the tools that are actually in that particular section. Um, so these are a couple of the, the people of action things. I assume some of you have seen all of these. Um, but just to reiterate, the idea of, of this campaign, again, is just to show people in action, um, just to use a basic tagline, together we, and then just um, a verb as well that basically talks about what are you doing. You can, you can translate that into your own wording if you want. You use your own imaging. Again, on the Brand Centre, you can just create these, and you can use those on Facebook. You can use them in your printed brochures, anything um, that you actually need to, to, to present yourself or present your club as well. So any questions on Brand Centre? People have been in there, don't know how to use it, questioning why it's even there. <laughs> any other general questions? Yeah, you, you can put your own photo, photos there, can't you? Absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. So there's a, there's a template designer on there, and if I can swap the thing around at the end, I'll show you. But um, basically, yes, you can go in there, there's a tool, you just upload your own image um, and then you just put in the words that you want to have and you can create your own and download it. So, very easy to do. No, this is on uh, rotary.org. So, yeah, again, I'll, I'll make sure that, so in that information I'll get um, David and Eric and um, Bruce to send around to each of the clubs. It'll have the details of the links in there.
firstly, I'll give you a little bit of background on the logo. So as everyone knows, it's actually been seven years since Rotary actually updated its logo material. At the time, I think they said to everybody, you have three years to update your material. Yeah. Okay, so seven years later, um, I, we do know that many clubs um, still use old logos. Um, now, you know, some people might say, why is it important to update your logo? Well, um, it's a bit like anything. We bring it back to the McDonald's um, reference earlier because I know my, um, Andy likes his McDonald's. So, but what they do have is they have a symbol. If, you can be, you, if you're driving down the road and you see the big M in the distance, you know exactly what it is, don't you? Right? You know you can stop and you can get whatever you want. If they had something else in there or if the, the owner of that particular McDonald's restaurant decided to put a different logo up there and not the big M up there, would pe people might not see, have the same perception as they're driving past. So, I mean, simple example, maybe over the top example, but it, the idea of having the consistent logo is just to make sure that people can recognise us and not have to question, oh, is that, is that Rotary? Do I know that's Rotary? Or well, there's a Rotary club over here that look, uses that logo, and another one over here, are they really the same thing? Um, so that's why it's important to have uh, a consistent logo. So it's part of our brand. Um, so um, yeah, make sure you, you update and have a look at that. Um, so this comes from the, the Rotary visual guidelines. Um, these are the only logos you should have. Okay, and I'm gonna, as I said, I'm gonna show some examples in a minute that aren't like that. Um, I've seen ones, um, some of the biggest examples that I see are where they put, there's a, there's a line that you can use and people put it over here, they put the name over there, that's not right. Um, if you're not using the wheel, I mean, there are probably too many, too many options up here, to be honest, but um, they are all acceptable. Um, but anything else other than those is not something we should be using and haven't been using for a while. Yep. Sorry, did someone have a question? Or was that just David talking? That's just David talking. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. If I can do this one. Okay. Here we go. Um, so this isn't from, this is not from, uh, any materials at your clubs, this is literally just looking at your Facebook pages and websites where you've got them. Now, I haven't included all the good ones here, okay? So if, you're, if you don't recognise anything on there, you're probably doing okay, all right? But I'm just going to point out a couple. Some of them are pretty good, right? But, but not quite, okay? So let's have a look at a couple. Now, this is my favourite. This one here is the, uh, my absolute favourite. I cannot remember which club that is. But that is one of, the, one of our club's Facebook pages, and that is their, um, their profile picture. I believe it is an old wagon wheel, or at least something that is meant to represent a wheel. But it's certainly not the rotary wheel, OK? Uh, we've got some old ones here. Um, we've got this one here, which looks like a, I, yeah, I'm not, a, <laughs> I first looked at that and thought of some other things, but it's a, um, <laughs> which I'm not going to share because it would be inappropriate, but the, you know, I think it's a barbecue thing. Um, what else have we got over here? Um, ones that just don't fit in the, in, in the profile thing. So just be careful when you're doing, uh, particularly on something like Facebook and you've got the little circle that covers your, your profile image. The rotary wheel is absolutely perfect to put in that profile section. Okay, anything else, a lot of other things get cut off. Okay, so just be careful when you get in there because it, it will cut things off. Um, what else have we got? Um, these are a little bit, you know, just older ones that haven't been updated. Um, that one's just been created. Uh, that one again uses that thing on the side which you can't do. That one's just slightly different font. I mean, look, these are, these are generally pretty good. I've seen some other clubs, other clusters where I've done it and they are even, even worse. But, but you can see that there are some variations in there. So if we're going to be consistent, um, I would just ask you to please just go back, have a look, make sure that your Facebook pages, etc., in particular are up to date um, and then look at your other material. All I'm going to ask everybody to do 
is just to make sure that there's at least one person in your club that pays attention to those guidelines. We're not all marketing experts, I know that. We're not all good with graphic, <coughs> excuse me, graphics programs, Facebook, whatever, I know that. <coughs> excuse me. If you, don't, if you don't know, go and talk to another club. Um, you know, some of us are smaller clubs, we don't have the people who have the expertise within our clubs. Go and talk to other clubs. I know at some of the other cluster meetings that we've been to, people have been talking about websites. Do we need to have a website? Some of them don't have the expertise to do it, but then they thought, well, maybe if three or four of our clubs get together, we can do our website for the three or four of our clubs, because then we will have the expertise to do it. So, you know, don't, don't feel that you, you know, can't reach out to anybody else when you need to. Obviously, reach out to the public image team as well, and we can help you as well. So update your branding, update your imagery, have a look at it. Um, and the last thing there, which just says look professional and you'll attract professionals. Now, you might not want to attract professionals. You might, might, might want to attract some amateurs. So by all means, look amateurish if that's who you want to target. But if you do want to attract professionals, make sure you, you look professional is always a good idea. All right. Um, most people will use Facebook, OK? So, um, but a lot of questions get asked about uh, what you should do with social media, how you should use it, what's the best way of doing it. Um, and in particular, get asked how often should you make a post, okay? So what I say is post regularly. You know, if your regularly is once every two weeks, so be it. Just have a regular process for updating it. If you've got enough content to be updating it every day, well, good luck to you, and I'd like to join your club because it's obviously very uh, doing a lot of good things. Um, but whatever suits your club, stick to a timetable. But the main thing is don't do a post now, wait six months to do another post, and then do a bunch of posts, and then wait another six months to do a post. Just posting regularly is the best way to engage an audience on any form of social media, whether it's Facebook or anything else. Um, if you are using media, on Facebook or any other other social media platforms, make sure it's good stuff. Um, don't take photos of the backs of people's heads in a meeting. Post it up there and say, "Hey, we had a great meeting." People looking at that image aren't going to think that. I um, can guarantee it. So, if you there, if you um, have a picture of you guys of someone doing something or doing a project, even better. People of action. That's the best thing to do. If it's not that, and it's not always going to be about that, sometimes it will be a meeting. If you're going to do a meeting post, make sure you have a reason for doing it. Tell people you've got a great guest speaker. Have a photo of a good smiling guest speaker or have a, a photo of a table that's watching that that's engaged. But um, just make sure that, again, the, the imagery reflects the image that you want to project, which is people of action or you know people, in, people who are engaged. Um, Few, few good videos, uh, sorry, a few good images or, 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 vi or a video um, is always a good thing to do. Don't put up a whole gallery of 75 photos that people have to scroll through. They're not going to do that. Um, you need to capture them with the, the one or two that you're going to have. Um, always provide a brief description of what you're doing. Um, if you just put a photo up there with no context, people are probably going to be wondering what that's all about. So you need to explain it to them. Um, make sure you don't have spelling errors, like the obvious one that I put in there. Um, make sure the language is positive. Make sure it's concise. Um, there is some language guides in the, the, the visual guidelines that come from the, the, the brand center as well that can give you ideas of the kind of words to use. Um, again, you don't have to go over the top with all of this, but just use it as a reference point. Just again, make sure that the, um, the wording is positive and reflects our brand or what you want our brand to look like. Um, and then ideally, and I always say this, ideally have a call to action in your post. So if that is simply to visit your website page, if it is to call you, if it is to register for an event, if it is to find out more about the, the group that you're supporting, um, any of those things are fine. Um, just something that the people who are viewing that post can take away. Um, and the other thing I would say about any, whether it's social media or any websites, don't forget they are your public face. So when you're posting on there, I know a lot of clubs will use it as their own little personal page. And you can have those things on Facebook as a, as a closed group. 
But if you're going to have a public facing page, don't use it as a, a means of communicating between your members because your public is the one that you're trying to reach out to there. They're people that perhaps don't know your club. If they look at your page and all you're doing is conversing with yourselves, they might think, oh, well, you're a little exclusive club. You don't want me to come and visit your page. So just have a think about when, you, when you're posting things to make sure that they are, again, reflecting what you want the public to think about your, your, your club. Um, this is just an example of, a, a, of one that um, is actually a Rotary Club in WA, I think. Um, so again, look, I mentioned it was, you can have meeting posts. They kind of look like they're engaged in a conversation. They at least look happy, it's bright. Um, there's some information uh, drawing people in. They've got a headline there. What are you passionate about? Something to help you start reading. Um, and then they've got a, um, a call to action at the end to go and register for their event. So it, it, again, it's nothing over the top doesn't have to be fancy, it's just simple and just remembering a few basic ideas about, about how to put the post together. So 